Hi guys, I wanted to just uh, make a little follow-up video for you about um, the standard normal distribution since we didn't quite get through all of this today and maybe uh, some of it wasn't clear. So I just like to go through and make sure that you understand how to do these questions and the significance of the standard normal distribution. So we spoke earlier in class about uh, normal distributions and how we can work with them to find you know, certain features of a population or certain features of a distribution, the percentage of um, scores or people or individuals that fall in a certain category. Uh, so the standard normal distribution uh, is a little bit different in that it is a normal distribution that has been standardized. So what that means is uh, you, we, you're familiar with finding a z-score for an individual observation. Well, a standard normal distribution means if you take a regular normal distribution and you standardize or find the z-score for each of the observations in that distribution, and then you make a plot of the resulting distribution, what you get is another normal distribution. But this is this called the standard normal distribution because the amazing fact is uh, let me use a different color here. No matter which normal distribution I standardize all the observations for, so symbolizing three different normal distributions here uh, with maybe different means. <clears throat> Let's say this mean is five, and standard deviation one, and I don't know, this mean here. 10 and standard deviation is 6 and who knows this one could be way different so mean of 0.1 and standard deviation of 0.001 something like that if I take all three of those distributions and I take every individual observation from that distribution and I standardize it the resulting distribution is the standard normal distribution. Same thing here, taking every observation here and standardizing it by subtracting the mean and dividing by the standard deviation, the resulting distribution is a standard normal. And again, same thing here, taking every observation from here with a different mean and standard deviation, run it through the formula, standardize each observation, the resulting distribution is the standard normal distribution, which has very specific properties, mean zero, standard deviation one. So we know that all of those distributions have been transformed into this distribution. And what we learned last class, very important, is that when I subtract something from each observation in a distribution and when I divide by something, uh, divide every observation in distribution by a number, constant, these are constants, uh, mu and sigma at this point, what happens is many things change, but the shape doesn't change, okay? The shape stays the same. And we also looked at the fact that any distribution for which I standardize all its values, the mean of that distribution is zero, and the standard deviation of that distribution is one. I even gave you a s slight mathematical derivation using formulas for that, okay? so. This is an amazing fact. This is really, really amazing, really deep and powerful. What it means for us is that I can now take any normal distribution, standardize all its values, and end up with the standard normal distribution. So then, because statisticians have done things like integrate and find the area under this curve for every small little interval that you could possibly want, we could do any kind of calculation we want regarding those distributions by standardizing them. So this table here, which is on your formula sheet, okay, table A is what it's called in our textbook. Uh, it's not really table A, it's table B in some other book, but in any case, this represents all the areas uh, underneath the standard normal uh, uh, distribution right 
and uh, for very very small intervals and this is something I'll go over with you in class some other time but it's really amazing that we know we basically know everything about this distribution and I can make any normal distribution look like that so that's really really powerful for us to do analyses of those distributions okay and so here's the definition standard normal distribution is a normal distribution with mean zero and standard deviation one we already said that uh, if a variable x has any normal distribution it must be normal to begin with with uh, some mean and standard deviation then if you standardize it if you standardize each observation you get the normal distribution okay and the standard normal distribution I should say and um, Notice how important the word normal is that we capitalize it in statistics. Um, and standard normal distribution here looks like that. Okay, mean zero and the standard deviation of one. All right. And <clears throat> the rest of this page goes on to talk about how to use the standard normal table, which our textbook calls table A. This one. <clears throat> I really don't want to do that right now. I think uh, that's okay. I'll show you in class how to use this slightly, but honestly, for us, it's more important that you know how to use your calculator or maybe a computer to find these things, to do normal probability calculations from the standard normal table, uh, from the standard normal distribution. I apologize. <clears throat> so I, I encourage you to go read this over. I'll go over it with you a little bit in class, but what I'm really interested in is getting to the calculator portion. Okay, so. This is much more useful for you and um, uh, more real world. I'll try and show you this in RStudio as well so you can know how to do probability calculations using software and calculators, All right? And so <clears throat> this says use table A. We will use a calculator and probably RStudio, okay? Uh, <clears throat> but what you must do to communicate understanding of what you're doing is make a graph. So you must make a quick graph and then shade the area of interest. This is very important. All right. So I'm going to do this <clears throat> and you should do it with me on your note sheet. All right. Use the normal curve statistical applet. You can verify your answers here. I can show you that. That's not a big deal. We'll just use the calculator in our studio for today. All right. So, um, <clears throat> To do this, I'll show you uh, on the calculator, but let's first answer the, see what the question is even asking. So it says, find the proportion of observations from the standard normal distribution that are less than 2.14. So we know that the standard normal distribution looks like this. It's normal. It has mean zero and standard deviation one. So something like this. This is obviously a rough sketch, always a rough sketch. We don't need to sketch in detail. And the question is, find the proportions of observations that are less than 2.14, less than 2.14. So 2.14 um, would be on our graph somewhere over here, 2.14. Let me use a different color. Maybe somewhere over here, okay, 2.14. So the percentage of observations from the standard normal distribution that would be less than 2.14. This is less than 2.14. Okay. So what you do here, and I wrote the calculator command for you there on your paper, um, is that. Now, some ways you can write this. I'm going to do this here. Uh, just to show you, but it says basically the probability that um, Z, this is a standard normal distribution, so it consists of Z scores, is less than or equal to 2.14 is, and then you put the answer, okay? I'm not going to require you to do this right now yet, but I'm introducing it to you so that you get comfortable with it. So the question, the answer to this is the answer we're looking for. So what you do is go on your calculator and go to second distribution see where the vars button above it says distribution and then we want to do normal cdf normal cumulative density function enter that and say lower bound this is fine this means basically negative infinity for us but uh, we usually just stick with negative 10,000 that's a small enough 
standard deviation that it basically means negative infinity on the standard normal distribution. Um, in practice, not mathematically exactly, but in practice. And so our upper bound is 2.14. Okay, so if you look at this lower bound down here, negative 10,000 standard deviations, okay, and upper bound is 2.14 standard deviations. That's what 2.14 means. And then our mean for our standard normal is zero and our standard deviation is one. Enter, enter, and there's the answer. Now maybe you have to type this in directly in your calculator and you don't get the stats wizard. That's fine. Um, here's the answer to our question. So our question's answer is round to the thousandth always for AP stats. So 0 0.984, 0 0.984, so 0 0.984. Uh, and this says proportion, that is a proportion. You can do a percent, but that's it. That's the answer, okay? So this area corresponds to 0.984 of the entire distribution of all the area, okay? Which is one. Um, and then also you can do this on RStudio. Let's see if I can figure this out on RStudio again. I believe the calculation you do here is P norm, and then you do 2.14 and you do zero and one. Okay, so it actually gives you a little tip here. Look at that beautiful tool tip. Uh, what are you looking for? Okay, the area, i uh, sorry, the z-score and then the mean and the standard deviation of the distribution. So I put zero one. You could probably get away with not even writing that. Let's see if that works. Yeah, and there it is, okay. So I just typed it there because I'm used to that, but uh, if it's just zero and one, those are the defaults, you just do that. All right, so is this the same answer? 0.984, if you round to the thousandth, that's exactly the same answer, okay? So this is how you do it on our studio. <clears throat> uh, let's do another one very quickly, I have to get going here. So let's do this, there's a picture, and this says uh, proportion of observations greater than nine, one, negative 1.78. So, again, zero is here, one, two, negative one, negative two. You don't have to write all the numbers, you don't have to do all this stuff, basically you're just showing that you know what's going on. So, uh, proportion of observations greater than negative 1.78, so negative 1.78 probably be around here, closer to two, so negative 1.78, something like that, and you're showing that you understand observations greater than that's that side of the distribution. The picture also helps you to know what your answer should look like. This looks like you've almost colored the entire distribution, so you should be close to one. Makes sense. I'm almost coloring the whole distribution here. This should be closer to one as well. Okay, definitely well over half. So do the same thing again. The command for your calculator is here. This is the other way around. So we do second distribution, normal CDF, and we are trying to do lower bound at this point is negative one. 0.78 upper bound is 10,000 which is basically infinity for the standard normal distribution and we do that and again now oh, seems logical very close to one again because I'm shading most of the distribution so this makes sense so the probability the chance that I randomly pick a value here a z value from the distribution and it's greater or equal to negative 1.78 is, and uh, what was our number there, 0 0.962, 0 0.962, 0 0.962. Again, on our studio, a little bit different here. Uh, you can just push up and see this, and hopefully we get a tool tip. We're not getting the tool tip. Okay, so let me show you. There's another trick here. You put the lower bound on the left, so negative 1.78 comma and then you put zero and one for the mean and standard deviation and then you say this is the uh, we want to see the upper tail of the distribution so you say lower dot tail equals capital letters false okay so lower tail is false and what you do there is you get the answer we had before okay so I'm not looking for the lower tail I'm looking for the upper tail, as in our picture. I'm looking for the upper tail, 
lower tail is the default. All right? So there's the answer in RStudio. And then you can keep going. So uh, the next logical thing is what if I'm going for values in between two numbers? So between negative 1 to 1.25 and 0 0.81. So if this is a mean of 0 here, uh, this is negative 1, negative 2, 1, 2, and so on. This is very rough, okay? But that's fine. I'm trying to just visualize what I'm doing. Uh, negative 1, 2, 5 is here, and 0 0.81 is just below 1 here, and we're asking between them, okay? So this, if you write this like a probability statement, it's a little bit different. You're doing this. What's the chance that I pick a Z that's between two numbers? between negative 1, 2, 5, and between 0 0.81. And again, on your calculator, you go second, distribution, normal CDF, enter. And now we do lower and upper bound, but they're both numbers. So not something like infinity, negative 1.25. And the upper bound I want to go up to is 0.81. And mean and standard deviation zero. We're in the standard normal distribution. And there's the answer, 0 0.685. So this is 0 0.685. Okay. Um, again, on RStudio. How do I do this on RStudio? So here you would go basically uh, subtract two probabilities from each other. All right. So there's no easy way that I found, at least, in a cursory kind of investigation here to find this answer. So you would subtract the bigger probability, uh, the smaller probability from the bigger one, or the lower tail from the bigger one. Okay, so you do something like this, P norm, and then say uh, 0.81, the upper bound, uh, zero and one, and say subtract from that the lower bound, which is P norm, and that is, negative 1.25 also with a standard deviation of 0 and 1 okay and yeah so I just subtract the smaller or the lower bound from the bigger or the upper bound and then I get your answer okay and I believe that's the same thing I had earlier here all right and so there's the answer there and then lastly is doing the reverse so we're not doing the table thing. We want to do the calculator uh, um, skill. So we want to do inverse norms. So this is asking the opposite question. Find the 20th percentile. What Z score will give me the 20th percentile? What Z value will give me the 20th percentile? So that's asking this question. If I know that the area uh, that I'm looking at is 0.2, what z-score makes that happen? What z-score has 20% of the distribution below it? Okay, uh, this is asking what z-score has 45% of the distribution's values above it? Okay, and this is literally the inverse calculation of what we did before. So now there's the calculator command. You do inverse norm, you give it an area and a mean and standard deviation, and it gives you back a z-score. So here we gave the calculator a z-score and we got back an area. Now we're giving it an area and we're going to get back a z-score. Okay? And so the answer to this question is what is z? Z is, and on your calculator you do second distribution, inverse norm, enter, and you say what's the area below the z-score I'm looking for, 0.2. Uh, left tail, meaning the area below the z-square I'm looking for. Um, so that would be at the 20th percentile. That's what our picture shows, at the 20th percentile, this area left. And so just do that, enter, and go paste, enter, and you get negative uh, 0.842. Negative 0.842, basically, negative 0.842. So, there it is. Z is zero point as negative zero point eight four two. That would be this number. Negative zero point eight four two. Makes sense. It looks like it should be on the left, less than zero. Okay? And then this one looks like it should be just above the middle, right? Just above the middle. Just less than fifty percent of the data. And so this is a different question. 
uh, you go second distribution inverse norm okay I'm giving you an area I want back a z-score at this point I'm giving you 45 percent of the area but now we want the right tail so if you look at our picture the right tail is what I'm looking for and so the the, the z-score that has 0.45 area above it to the right all right and then you go there and you paste uh-huh and you get that okay it should be close to zero it should be half so it's 0.126 about 0 0.126 close to zero because zero is right here that makes sense okay so that's how you do that and then on our studio let's see if i remember how to do that on our studio you do uh, not p norm you do q norm okay q norm and then you give it the area and the mean and the standard deviation okay and gives you back a z value this is a z score and again you do q norm and then if you want to do uh, for q norm if you want to know what's to the left actually you have to do it differently so this is saying 0 0.45 for q norm you have to give it this end you keep giving it the lower tail so the lower tail here would be 0.55 so you just say uh, 0.55 okay and enter and that gives you the same z-score right so that's how you do it in R studio on your calculator and just remember the concepts and why you're doing this we're trying to calculate percentage of the no standard normal distribution which is equal to a probability that something is randomly selected from that distribution Okay, hope this helps you guys. If you have any questions, let me know.